Mac here. It is Comic Book Wednesday. It is Wonder Woman, and what we are taking a look at today is this. The brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Wonder Woman from Dark Knight's Death Metal. Now, I was not a big fan of Death Metal. As you can see, I have the issue. I know this isn't the last one. Issue 7 was the last one, but I feel like this is the one that portrays this version of Wonder Woman the best. It was just a little too try-hard for me. If this was the 90s and I was back in high school, I probably would have been really into that dark, emo, ultra-violent, everything just over the top. But now, at 2000, 2020, when it came out, I thought we were past that. However, having said that, I do think the look of this figure on its own is fantastic. The chainsaw sword, the blue highlights in her hair, you can see the detail in her legs, which will take a better, or the, the boots, which we'll take a better look at once we get her out of the box. I think the figure standing on its own looks fantastic. So what we have is your basic McFarlane packaging here. We have the extra space over here for the Dark Father Build-A-Figure. On the side, as always, we have the window on the side. We have the window up top. Death Metal, Wonder Woman, Dark Knight's Death Metal on the side. And we have this piece of artwork back here, which is more than likely the artwork that's going to be of the card inside. The interesting thing about this is this is not this is not a drawing. This is not a comic still, as the other ones are down below here. Well, except for maybe Batman. This is actually a photograph. We'll, we'll take a look at it when we get the card out. This is actually a photograph of the toy with a backdrop and some scenery. So that's different as far as any of the McFarlane toys that I've gotten. I think that's very cool. You see the cross cell down here that we have the other figures in this line. Uh, Batman, Superman, the King Robin. Eh. <laughs> Whoops. Ah, it's falling. <laughs> so we will take that as a sign. <laughs> <laughs> that the comic wants to go away, and we will get this box open, and we will take a look at DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys Wonder Woman from Dark Knight's Death Metal. All right, friends, here she is, Death Metal Diana, out of the box, and the first thing we will do is we will put the tape measure to her, and we will see how she measures up. Being a McFarlane toy, she should come in at about seven inches tall. So we put the tape measure to her, and at the top of her head, she's just at seven and a half, at the top of her crown, she's at about seven and three quarters. So the crown gives her a little bit of an edge over some of the other figures, especially some of the other versions of Diana that we've seen. Now, articulation. The head can spin a full 360, but because of this mane of hair, which is a soft mane, it's real rubbery, um, it doesn't really move much. And I'm not gonna force it because I don't want to bend this out or break it or anything. But if you heat this up, if you get this loose enough, I know the head does do a full 360. Now, it can look down. It can kind of look up. We have shoulder... Whoops. Oh, no. Ugh, fit that back in. Ugh. This is a very... Because of her armor and because of how much she has going on, she has the articulation. It just is really hard to move it. Like, that's as far as her arms will go out. And you can see that the... The one arm goes out further than the other arm. She has a butterfly hinge, for what it's worth, in the shoulder. She also has double-jointed elbows, which give you some really good travel. I like how the armor pieces fit together like that right there. She has wrist swivel. Oh, well, wait. She has bicep swivel. She has a wrist swivel. And the wrist on the left hand pivot in and out. The wrist on the right hand pivots up and down. That's the hand that's going to hold the chainsaw, and we'll take a look at that. This does not have an ab crunch like the other Wonder Woman figures have that we've seen from McFarlane Toys, but it does have a ball joint at the waist, so you can twist, and you can get some movement out of her like that. The legs come out to the sides that far, that far forward, that far back. There's a little bit of a Pivot at the ball joint right there. Double-jointed knees, but because of how chunky her boots are, they don't come all the way back, as you can see right there. Ankle swivel. Ankles will rock back a little bit forward, but once again, the boot armor gets in the way. And, of course, we have our toe articulation right there. 
So that is the articulation. It has all of the articulation that we expect from a McFarlane toy. It's just like I said, especially up here in the shoulders because of her armor, it's very hard to get any amount of uh, movement up and down out of them. Other than that, I think the figure is fantastic. Like I said, I really like the look of this figure on its own. Despite not being a fan of Dark Knight's death metal, I really like this look for her. And if we bring this forward and we take a look at her face sculpt, look at how that is. I love the look on her face. I love the sculpt, the black eyeliner, the black lipstick, the blue highlights and the edge of her hair. I think the whole thing looks great. I really do. The colors for her are more muted than what we've seen in other Wonder Woman figures, but that's to be expected considering the the storyline that she comes from. Everything was, all the colors were muted in, in Death Metal. Now, just like with the articulation, like I said, one, one metric of mine for every Wonder Woman figure, she can kind of get that cross bracer pose, not as much as I would have liked, but she can do it. So I'm not going to put up too much of a fuss for that just because of how unique and how good everything else looks. Like the past two Wonder Woman figures we've gotten from McFarlane Toys have been very unique. We had um, Wonder Woman from The Last Night on Earth, which we looked at last week, and now we have this one. And the only normal, quote-unquote, normal Wonder Woman that we've received from McFarlane so far is from Wonder Woman 1984, which I like, don't get me wrong, I just, I hope that uh, eventually we get a comic accurate just figure like this, other than the 84 figure. I would like to see what he would do with like the modern interpretation of Wonder Woman, how, how it would come out. I know realistically it would probably be about the same as Wonder Woman 84. I just, I want more of it. <laughs> now as far as accessories go, here we have the card. And like I said before, the art on it isn't a drawing. It's actually the toy itself taken a photo of, which I think is pretty cool. It looks really good and really shows off how well this figure actually looks, especially with like the lightning background and the rocky terrain that she's standing on. Turning it over, we see that I cut the card when I was cutting it out of the packaging with the knife, which that kind of upsets me, but I'm not going to lose much sleep over it. So we have Wonder Woman, Dark Knight's Death Metal, real name Diana Prince, height 6 feet. Like I said, I keep thinking that's too small. I think she's actually taller than 6 feet. Weight, 185 pounds. Following the universe-shattering events of Dark Knight's Death, or Dark Knight's Metal, the Earth is enveloped by the Dark Multiverse and has transformed into a hellish landscape twisted beyond recognition. Now the Batman who laughs rules the planet, and in an attempt to defeat him, Wonder Woman uses her invisible jet and lasso of truth <laughs> to forge a new weapon... The Chainsaw of Truth. <laughs> See what I mean? Um, and cut down the evil that stands in her way. Teaming up with Batman, Superman, and other DC heroes, Wonder Woman is on a mission to save the DC multiverse. See what I mean, man? The Chainsaw of Truth. Come on, guys. <laughs> and that brings us to the next accessory, which is the Chainsaw of Truth. <laughs> now, despite its name, which, I'm sorry, the name is ridiculous, <laughs> I think this looks... I think this looks pretty good. I like the look of it. I like how it has like that, that steampunk look to it. I like the blue, the blue sapphire up top. You can see my blade is a little bent, but I can heat that up and should be able to get that back in shape, no problem. I think it looks really good. Also, it looks really good in her hand. And what I especially love is that you can get that pose out of her that is on the front cover of that issue of Death Metal that I set up next to her at the beginning of the video. And I think that is really cool. That that almost uh, is, that almost forgives the fact that she can't do the cross bracers, that she can strike that pose. But I like the blue teeth in here. I like the look of it. It's very unique, especially for somebody like Wonder Woman. So I, I dig that. Also, no surprise, we get the DC figure stand, a figure stand which we get with every McFarlane action figure anymore, which I cannot stress enough how genius of a move this is and why more toy or more action figure manufacturers don't do this at this level. Like Hasbro and Mattel should absolutely be including something 
like how much could this possibly cost? This disc of plastic with a peg, especially when you know you're going to be mass producing them by the thousands. This is a great idea, and I wish I wish Hasbro and Mattel would do something like that. And then we have our build a figure pieces for the Dark Father, which I'm not going to get the other figures in this series. So this is probably going to tra turn into trade bait, or I'm just going to sell them outright. I don't know. Or they'll collect dust in a drawer somewhere. So that is our look at McFarlane Toys, Wonder Woman, Dark Knight's Death Metal. And like I keep saying, despite not liking the series that much, I actually really like, I kind of love this figure. I love it for its uniqueness. I love it for its color palette. I love it for the face sculpt of Diana. I even love it for how unique something like the Chainsaw of Truth is. I just think this is, on its own, a great figure. I could have done without the whole storyline, and I definitely I won't be picking up the rest of the series. Not because I think they're bad, it's just not something that appeals to me. That if this is an indication of how the rest of the series is, and you're a fan of death metal, I say definitely go for it. If they're all built like this, if they all have this unique styling, this, this, these great details going on her, the design of her boots even is fantastic right here. I think that's one thing I forgot to point out, that the design of the boots looks great. So, if you're into the DC Dark Multiverse, if you're into Dark Knight's Death Metal, I definitely recommend checking the series out. I found these at Target. They came out a lot faster than I was expecting. Like, we knew they were coming down the line. I just thought they were coming out later in the month. I didn't expect them to be on the shelf on the first of the month. So definitely go to Target, check them out. You won't be disappointed. So until next time, play well, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.